All right, motherfucks. So somehow I had missed an episode of AW. I think it was last week's episode, the Beach Break episode. I just missed it. I don't know why. I just missed it. Maybe it was two weeks ago. I don't know. But I found out my DVR and I started watching. And there's a part. Um, well, I don't even know if it was Beach Break, but whatever. It was an episode and there was a part. It was Adam Cole versus Orange Cassidy, which, you know, I don't even know why I was watching this match. But there's a part where Adam Cole goes under the ring to get a chair. And holding that chair is Danhausen, motherfucks. Danhausen. Now, for those of you that are lucky enough to not know about Danhausen, uh, I'm going to ruin that shit for you by telling you a little bit. Now, I'm a little bit familiar with Danhausen. I've seen him uh, cut a few promos. I don't think I've ever seen him wrestle. But I've known who he was, you know? I just I don't know why. I just know who he is. I feel like I've read about him. I don't know. From what I understand, Danhausen is everything that's wrong with wrestling. Like, you know, good for him. You know, I give, I give props to people like Danhausen who are trying to do something um, for their medium, you know? They're trying to, like, uh, be different or whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? Um, like, they're trying to make it in their own way. Now, it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. This is how wrestling works now, all right? You have to understand that there's nothing that we can do. But let's be honest. Let's be honest. This kind of shit is ruining everything. Right? You have this Dan House and motherfucker, you And he's out there just making a mockery of wrestling. Right? Again, you can't fault the guy, right? You cannot fault the guy. He is trying to do something. But what he's trying to do, in my opinion, has nothing to do with wrestling. Right? He wants to do comedy... In a form of entertainment that is based on combat, or at least the perception of combat, right? It's obviously fake. Nobody is going to deny that shit. But let's be real. We have these situations where comedy takes precedence over everything else. Now, I'll tell you what I mean when I read some things that some fans are saying about uh, fucking, what's it called? Uh, Uh... Dan Housen here, you know what I'm saying? So, one guy says, you talk about unexpected. No dirt sheet rumors, no spoilers, nothing. Nobody expected him to be there so soon. Especially the way that he did show up. Finally, Housen. Another thing about Dan Housen is that people think it's funny to put Housen at the end of different words. Because that's like his thing. And it's not funny at all. It's just stupid, you know? Um, and then it says here. This is this comment. Is this what gets me on YouTube? It says, Denhausen is going to be good on all the vlogs. Can't wait to see him on Being the Elite. Or whatever the fuck. Yeah, Being the Elite, right? His gimmick to start should be him applying to all factions. That could be hilarious, especially for factions like House of Black. He can also mess with the ass boys. The other guy says, idea. Denhausen should have his own sideshow where he does skits or invites other wrestlers to his world. This would take place in a parallel world underneath the ring, adding to his character and exploring his bizarre nature. And the person says, throwing ideas out there. Like, he's, like, I mean, what the fuck is this shit? His gimmick should be that he has skits? You have a guy with face paint and his purpose in your company is to do skits? We don't do skits in wrestling, motherfucks, unless they further a storyline. You know, this is that same kind of horse shit, except it's more tongue-in-cheek, than The Fiend. Right? Remember The Fiend, motherfuckers? You know what I'm saying? Fiend versus Cena. In my opinion, the beginning of the end for Bray Wyatt's career. So when people were surprised that Bray Wyatt got released, as usual, I saw the writings on the wall. Like Jeff Hardy up in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? I saw the writings on the wall before it happened. It was so evident to your boy that Bray Wyatt was going to get released. Because at the end of the day, nobody wants a Danhausen in a serious company, right? Danhausen is good for AW. Good for them. I hope he does well. I hope I, I hope I like him. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is this. The goofiness, the out-of-touch nature of the fans, and the fact that nobody understands what being cool is anymore is exactly why AW is going to hover around the 800,000 views per week, Right? Until they start dropping. When you try to tell me, motherfuckers, that Daniel Bryan is cool, 
I laugh at your face. When you try to tell me that Adam Cole coming out and saying, who's ready for story time with Adam Cole, baby? Right? That's so fucking cringy. It's embarrassing to me. It's like, does this guy, is he, is he trying to say that he's good on the mic and that he's a just good storyteller? He never tells a story. That's like his phrase. He says that and then he talks about, well, Bobby Fish is here now. Who's ready for a story time with Adam Cole, baby? Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly are in AEW. Are they? Fuck your mother. What do you think of them apples? Then, to make matters worse, you have Denhausen, who is just another Orange Cassidy. Now you got, now you have two of these motherfuckers. You know what, what the fuck is going on? Nothing cool is happening. It's unfortunate because AEW has done things that are cool. Most of them have been derailed by Cucky Rhodes, but they had moments. Like, they should, they didn't, but they should have pushed Lance Archer to the moon when he came in with Jake uh, Jake the Snake, right? Jake the Snake cut an amazing promo on Cody, being like, Cody, like you're a pussy, and like I'm not afraid of you, so I'll turn my bag on your bitch ass. What are you going to do? I have no respect for you. I'm not afraid of you. Right, so he turned his bag on Cody. What should have happened was, in the first match, uh, the murder hawk monster, Lance Archer, destroys Cody Rhodes. Like, beats him. Does five finishers on him in a row and pins him. Clean. Then next week, the murder hawk monster comes out and wins an over-the-top battle royal, uh, battle royal to determine that I'm a wrong contender for either the jobber ti- the title or the main title. I'd go for the main title. And he just throws everyone over. He just throws, he just grabs everyone, just throws them over like indiscriminately just like he eliminates like 10 out of 20 people you know he hits the, the blackout on all of them right and he throws in like two guys in the end it's like him and like you know you, you, you could make it so the last two people or the last three people are lance archer and two like you know semi Guevara types right two smaller guys he just grabs them and throws them over right he becomes some contender and he either goes and has like a very close match or more likely in my opinion he just wins the title clean he just beats the champion clean and that's how you make a star and that's how you use and, and make good use of Jake Roberts in your roster. Instead, what they did was they had Jake Roberts come out there and basically have Cody Rhodes beat his guy. Then his guy's a jobber now, you know? Oh, now he's back. Oh, Lance Archer's back. He's a fucking fuck, you know? So there you go. AW, that's their problem. They don't know what cool is, you know? They're being run by a bunch of nerds. I mean, let's be real. They're being run by a bunch of nerds. I was doing some grocery shopping... Yesterday, the grocery store is like right under my apartment building. It's in the same building, right? I was at Safeway up in this bitch. I go to Safeway. I'm listening to my to my phone. I just been to the gym. You know, I'm feeling good. And one of the songs that comes up, I put like a random playlist. One of the songs that comes up is the the Good Brothers theme song, the new one, the the Devil is in the distance. It's like a badass song, like or at least it starts out badass, right? It's called Devil in Your Six, motherfucks. And I remember that the Good Brothers were actually cool. Like, I understand. They're both generic motherfucks. But in the world of generic motherfucks, they're badasses, right? They both come out with their sleeve tattoos. Carl Anderson just always looks intense, even though he's generic looking, right? They're out there doing like a move and then getting up and just like looking at the crowds as the crowds boo. Like, they're, they're effective at what they were doing. And what happened? What happened? Someone told Luke Gallows that he was cool. Someone incorrectly informed Luke Gallows that he should have creative opinions. Same thing with the, with the young cucks, right? And then before you know it, Luke Gallows comes out wearing a tie-dye shirt and calling himself Luke Dangly Gallows, right? And where are they now? They aren't in AEW anymore, right? What the fuck happened to that, that impact, uh, impact wrestling uh, cross-promotion? Nothing, motherfuckers. Nothing happened. So there you have it. You know, Luke Gallows and uh, fucking Carl Anderson... Are now comedy jobbers. They cannot be rehabilitated in in, a, in the TNA. It's not possible, motherfucks. But that's where where it was. That's where it stood, motherfucks. That's where it stood. They could have been something. They were presented in WWE as being these like you know mainstream guys who were being skyrocketed to the main roster, not having to go prove themselves in NXT because they're not fucking MSK and they're not Legado del Fantasma, right? They're Gallows and Anderson, motherfuckers. These two big guys, or at least one of them is big as shit and the other one's like at least normal size, right? These two guys who are badasses, they're supposed to be the best tag team in the world, according to some, right? But what happens? Eventually, they become comedy jobbers. And people who are not cool 
tell them what to do. In my opinion, in this case, it has to be Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson them- themselves. Because look at what they did in AEW. They're even more cringy than WWE. Oh, that's why you don't have a dangly. <laughs> they don't have a dangly. It's like the young bucks. Like they're not cool. They're not. These are not cool dudes. Like when they were in high school, people like made fun of them. And they were like the weird kids. They were like, "Shut up, geek." You know, like I don't want to hear what you have to say. You're a guy who thinks wearing berets is cool. You know, it's never been cool, right? Kaki Omega, same thing. He's an otaku. I mean, whatever. Good for him. But the point is, cool people need to make the decisions on what is and is not cool. You know, when you give someone like Dan Housen creativity, you have grown men being like, congrats, Housen. Oh, he's finally here, Housen. Like, what the fuck are you saying, man? That's fucking stupid, motherfucks. You know what I'm saying? This is why Vince Russo kicks ass. Because you can tell, when you listen to a Vince Russo interview, you can tell that he's a dude. He's like a cool guy. He's like a Jersey type. You know, I think he's from New York, but he's like a Jersey type. He's just a cool dude. Like, in high school, Vince Russo was... was Pounding broads, motherfucks. He was out there going out, probably going to parties, getting drunk, getting laid. Not that getting drunk is good, believe you me, it's not, right? And then he has to go and argue with Jim Cornette, who's like a fat nerd. You know, he's a cuck. He's a cuckold, right? Like, he's a fucking loser. Jim Cornette, who's one of the good ones, too. Like, I like Jim Cornette, you know? He understands wrestling, for sure. But he's not cool. So he thinks that, like, doing this old school shit is what's going to sell. Vince Russo's like, no, motherfucks. What's going to sell is what I'm going to tell you. Right? Jerry Springer, motherfucks. The 90s. That's what's cool. Dan Housen should come out as, like, like, like he should be sent out by, like, I don't know, uh, Edge. Like, if, if Edge is feuding with Undertaker, Edge sends out Dan Housen to mock the Undertaker just so Dan Housen can get, like, a last ride through the ring or something. That's Dan Housen's job. It's not to come, come and interfere in a main event. You know what I mean? That's not what he's supposed to be doing, in my opinion, right? But because people that are not cool are not running wrestling, this is what happens. In my opinion, if a company wants to do well, they just hire Russo. I'm sick of this, fire Russo. Why? Why fire Russo? So you can see Amazing Red main event? No, motherfucks. Nobody wants to see that. People want to see matches that matter. Oh, Judy Judy Bagel on a pole match was stupid. No, it wasn't, motherfucks. Were you around? Did you see it live? Because when you saw it live, people were talking about that. In school, people were like, oh, can you believe it, man? Like, Chris Canyon, RKO, Judy, Judy Bagwell, right? People were talking about it. It was, it was like, in the mainstream still, you know? And it was funny as shit. It's like you're putting this woman on, a, on like, on a platform, right? And the winner gets gets Judy Bagwell. So is, this, is the guy going to save his mom? Or is, I think, I think it was it was with Canyon. Because I know Canyon had a feud with them uh, with Judy Bagwell, right? Or is the other guy going to, like, win, right? And what's he going to do if he wins? You know, it's a match with meaning behind it. You know, compare that, for example, to, let's say, like, in a- AW, Matt Hardy versus Adam Page, right? Winner gets the other one's, like, salary or something. I don't give a flying fuck who wins the salary. You know, what? Is that going to be converted into a gimmick? If it's not converted into a gimmick, I don't care. The Judy Badwell, Bagwell thing is converted into a gimmick. It's part of the story, right? It would, it would, it would be like, imagine if, if, if like... Matt Riddle's scooter was stolen, right? That could be a story. It wouldn't be a good one, but it could be a story. It's not the same thing as, for example, if you stole, I don't know, Montez Ford's, like, car, right? Because Montez Ford's car is not a character in the show. The scooter is a character. There's a, like, you recognize the scooter as Matt Riddle's thing, right? You see what I'm saying? So that's the, the, the point. Cool things have to make sense, too. You need to hire cool people, WWE and AEW. AW, who had the opportunity to do so, you know, they don't want to hire, like, Vince Russo and give him creative control because, you know, that goes against their entire company. The entire company is premised on, oh, let's do things the way Cody Rhodes and Young Bucks think is, think is good. But they're not good at their job. Cody Rhodes has made himself a three-time secondary champion, and his goal is to desperately try to make the secondary title feel like a primary title, you know? It's as simple as that. That's why Cody Rhodes keeps giving himself a title, and that's why he keeps trying to put it over. But it's not working, because the WWE has conditioned the wrestling fan base to acknowledge only one championship, and everything after that is a secondary title. It's a TV title, motherfucks. So, with that being said, people like Dan Housen are indicative of things that are not cool. Now, Dan Housen sometimes is funny, I'm not going to lie. Like, he calls Billy Gunn's kids the ass boys, right? Which makes sense. You know, it's not... No one's saying it's like top-level humor. But he is funny. He does have some charm, you know? The problem is that this isn't the time for charm. 
This is not 1999 where a dead house would have been charming and funny. I mean, he would never have a, have a spot because everyone was charming and funny. But it's the time for badassery. It's the time for things that actually draw in dollars. Denhausen, somehow everybody knew who the fuck he was because he started chanting his name. But Denhausen is not going to draw one additional dime, which I think proves it. I think proves it. Like, everyone there knew who he was. And it's, it's not like there's anyone that's new that was like, man, this show is so boring. And like, I'm not going to watch ever again, I don't think, right? I, I came here because I had a free ticket, blah, 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 blee, blee, blee. Then Denhausen comes out and this person's like, oh my God, what am I saying? I can't wait till next week to see what Denhausen is going to do. You see, that's not what happened, motherfucks. That's not what's going to happen. So, Danhausen, even though he might be entertaining to a certain extent, he's more of a detriment, right? You have people like Wardlow. Like, he's been held hostage by MJF for like two years. You know, give this guy a shot. Give someone a shot, motherfucks. Give someone something. All that being said, motherfucks, not knowing what is it is not cool, I can say for sure that Danhausen is not cool. You know, he's ironic, but he's not cool. Irony is not the same thing as being cool, even though people conflate the two, right? In this bullshit, horse shit, backwards, podunk, like, you know, inbred, white trash society that we have right now, that where TikTok makes, makes trends, right? It's a bunch of geeks doing geek shit. And nobody wants to just be like, dude, you're a fucking geek. Like, nothing's cool anymore, motherfucks. Even, like, you see these, like, fitness people being like, yeah, working out is cool, bro. And they're all, like, on steroids. You know? And it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. You're a geek. Like, you're, you're, like, you're the guy that started working out because you're insecure. You're not working out to, to perform better, to be, like, a better athlete. You're working out because someone bullied you. Because you were a geek in high school. They bullied you. And, I, and now you're like, I know what it's like to be bullied. Shut the fuck up. Bitch, I'll bully you again. I'll bully you like I'd bully Dan Housen's bitch ass. Or Orange Cassidy. Or those other twerp shits. Poor John Vegas. Nobody knows what cool is, and this is very evident in a variety of spaces, including YouTube and the YouTube wrestling community. There's, of course, a few cool ones. I talk about them once in a while, but there's a lot of geeks, too, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of geeks. There's a lot of people that, you know, are going to sit down and just talk your ear off about nothing and just, you know, just, just talk about, like, nerd shit and pretend it's cool, you know? It's like we all have a friend like that. We all have a friend that, like, I'll, I'll put it to you this way, motherfuckers. I'll end the video by saying this. One time, me and one of my best friends went to this hookah bar. That's where you smoke uh, hookahs, right? Uh, which is like tobacco pipes, if you will, right? We went there. It was kind of far. It's like in this podunk town. Uh, I live in like a major city, but or in the suburbs of a major city. And this was like in a podunk area, but we would go there because it was a nice place. It was like an hour away, too. We go there. One of my friend's friends uh, meets us there, right? He's a guy. He, he lives around there, right? And they have this jukebox in the hookah bar. It's a modern jukebox where you have like an app on your phone. And you pay like a dollar or 50 cents to play a song, right? And it's, it's a pretty good concept because you can play whatever the fuck you want. And you can really control the dynamics of the music that's being played. So like people will come out there they'll play like depressing ass like music or like they'll play like death metal. And then I'll go out there and I'll play some country or something that's actually cool, you know? Like not country, like not like Luke Bryan, you know what I mean? Like I'm talking about like cool shit. So uh, my friend's friend decides to spend like 20 bucks on this machine. He plays 20 songs. And instead of playing things that people will like... This guy's trying to do things that are funny instead. He's trying to make people laugh. Not actually be cool and enjoy himself. He's trying to make people laugh. So he plays things like the Sesame Street theme song. I don't even know what the fuck that is. That is because I'm a fucking immigrant, motherfucks. I came here when I was like nine. So I was too old to watch that shit. So he comes out and plays these songs, right? And I'm like, all right, one time is fine. And he starts playing like weird Al Yankovic or Yankovic, whatever the fuck his name is, right? And I'm like, this is not funny, dude. This is, it's cringy. Like, it's embarrassing. This was before the word cringe really existed, right? And this was like 10, 15 years ago. And I'm like, I'm telling my friend, I'm like, yo, your friend's a fucking geek, man. Like, we can't hang out with this guy ever again. He was a nice guy otherwise, but he was a fucking geek because he was playing this geek shit, all right? So, with that being said, motherfucks, you know what I'm saying? It's the same thing in wrestling and in YouTube and in other fields. It's a bunch of people that instead of trying to make good points, and trying to actually point to what actually is cool, which, though subjective, it has elements of objectivity. Instead, these cuckolds, these cucks, are doing the exact opposite. They're trying to get laughs. They're trying to, like, you know, get attention and get people to agree. It's very easy to have these, like, you know, stuck-in-stone opinions that never change, where it's like, oh, okay. L like, where, where instead of having your own opinion or something, you're like, how will the public 
accept this, right? This is the Justin Bieber syndrome. Justin Bieber comes out and everyone like correctly predicted that Pew would be hated, right? Like, oh, people are going to hate this kid. So everyone in high school and middle school, because I had some friends that were in high school when Justin Bieber was popular. I think I was too old for that, but um, they were still in high school. They were like, man, this guy's a fucking loser, man. This guy's a this, this guy's a that, this guy's a queer, this guy's a fag. They were saying all these things about Justin Bieber, right? And I'm like, wait, wait a second. Are you saying that because you actually believe that? Or are you saying that because you're parroting exactly what everyone else is saying, right? And it turned out it was the opposite. Because let's be real. Justin Bieber is none of those things. You know? People have called him like a lesbian. They've called him a fag, obviously. They've used all these horrible things. You know? Not, not to say that it's homophobic or anything like that. I mean, obviously it is. But like, they've, they've said a lot of shit about Justin Bieber. But you can say what you want. Justin Bieber is cool, motherfucks. Justin Bieber is cool as shit. He's a trendsetter. Trendsetter, right? So, people will always go the way that they're supposed to go. It takes balls, motherfuckers. It takes a sack to go the opposite way, to go the correct way, right? This can be seen, not to be a dead horse, in the Karrion Cross example, right? I, in my opinion, a lot of people, you know, a lot of my friends personally, like my friends in real life, a lot of them like Karrion Cross, and I, I told them, I was like, no, you like Karrion Cross because people are telling you Karrion Cross is good. You're, you're supposed to like him. And I'm like, but you cannot articulate to me why he's good and why he's cool. And none of them could because... And it's not their fault. It's just Karen Cross has some cool, right? And I, on the other hand, I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't give a rat's ass what their narrative is. I'll tell you how I feel. He sucks ass, right? And it's the same thing with Danhausen. It's the same thing with AW. They're going off of what will make people smile instead of what actually is cool. Like, do do you really believe that Daniel Bryan is gonna is gonna raise the ratings? What well, what is more likely to raise the ratings? A returning CM douche or perhaps? You making a new star that's awesome and pushing him as if he's awesome. Making a new star. Like I hear, for example, Major League Wrestling or whatever has this guy. I, I looked him up. Hammerstone, right? This guy looks amazing. He's a big, strong motherfucker and apparently he's our champion, right? That's the one I want to see. But the narrative says, no, the one that's going to become big is Jacob Fatu. I bet you Hammerstone gets signed to, to, to WWE and becomes bigger than Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu is going to be like the same guy on NXT now, the Solo S- Safoka, whatever the fuck his name is. That's his ceiling, motherfucks. Him saying, Umaga couldn't do it, Rikishi couldn't do it, Jacob Fatu isn't going to do it, right? The facts are what the facts are. I'm telling it to you like it is, motherfucks. You have to go against the grain sometimes, not for the sake of going, going against the grain. That's just stupid. That's equally dumb, you know? But you have to go against the grain and, uh, you know, move towards a different direction of humor and of entertainment and of things that make more sense. You know what I mean? Dan Housen isn't cool. Nobody really believes that. Nobody really believed that Karrion Cross was a good wrestler because it's like you watch him and you're like, this guy has three moves and they're like they're like the shittiest three moves you can think of, right? This guy has no personality. Like, you know, and people like that's when the excuses start coming. People are like, oh look at his old promos. Why? Why does he why why does he do these good promos now? You know? Like if someone signs Takamichi Noku and says, hey, look at 2002, he was good then. Wait a second, what about now? We're talking about now, right? So it's the same thing, motherfucks. Not having cool people involved in wrestling, not having cool people involved in YouTube, not having cool people involved in anything leads to spaces of not cool people talking amongst each other and then over there they establish new hierarchies of like, oh, well, I'm cooler than this guy because I only got pushed into a locker five days of the week instead of six days of the week, you know? Like, it's that kind of bullshit. So... Uh, the new hierarchies are horseshit. The old hierarchies remain and are awesome, motherfucks. And that's where we stand. We stand in that same exact situation. And the situation says what the situation says. Cuckolds. And the facts are what the facts are. Denhausen, not cool. Other people, cool. You know? Vince Russo is needed desperately. I think a company that, that has a good budget, like an AW type company, that decides to hire Vince Russo, that company will draw millions of viewers. You don't even need stars. You can make new stars. Just like just like TNA made new stars. TNA made a substantial amount of new stars. It's only when they started relying on people like Rhino and Raven that by comparison, the stars they were making seemed shitty. You know what I mean? Like when you bring Kurt Angle and he beats in he beats your undefeated Samoa Joe who's becoming a legitimate star, then what are you gonna do? Right? That's my point, motherfuckers. And with that, I'll talk to you motherfuckers later.